Welcome back, dear learners. Before the ad break, we did an exciting question. Again here, we have another question. And what we have is a pre-adjustment trial balance of JJ Traders. Let us go and see. Additional information and adjustments, all right? So I'm not going to read them, but we're going to do them individually. Let's begin with the first one. It reads, the telephone account of 312 for February must still be paid still be paid, must still be paid. So we're dealing with an accrued expense. We're dealing with an accrued expense. That means we come here and an accrued expense is a liability. So I'm gonna bring it now to the credit side and we're going to say the accrued expense is three, one, two, on the credit side because when we have an accrued expense, it is payable. We still have to pay it to um, whoever we have to pay. It could be uh, the telephone, uh, the service provider for the telephone. Then the next one has to come now to the telephone, whereby in the nominal account section, we are 3,720. And then we are told that 312 must still be paid. That means we have to come and add it, 312. So when we have added it, we will now end up with 4,032, 4,032. On the debit side, because our telephone is an expense. This is what you then see in the post-adjustment trial balance. Adjustment number two reads, an annual insurance premium of 1,560 was paid on the 1st of July. The moment they say an annual insurance premium, that means this is a premium for 12 months. In that case, we want to see which amount falls beyond. Our financial period ends on the 28th of February. That means it began on the 1st of March. Hence, it ends on the 28th of February. This insurance premium, an annual, was paid on the 1st of July. So here it is 1 July. That means it will end on the 30th of June. Remember, this is our financial period from March to Feb which is 12 months, and the insurance premium has been paid from July to June. So the period here is our problem, the period from 1 March until 30 June. This one here becomes our problem. How many months is that? So we begin to count. We count the month of March, we have April, we have May, and then we have June. That gives us four months. So we have four months over the total of 12 multiplied by 1,560. If we multiply this, we'll get 520. This is the period that has been paid in advance. Once we have paid in advance, we call it a prepaid expense. A prepaid expense because we have paid in advance. What we then do, we come here, then we say prepaid expense, and we bring it to the debit side, 520, under the balance sheet accounts section. In the nominal account section, we then come, then we say, the 4,140 that we paid, it was more because we paid for four extra months. So we come and say minus 520, and then we end up with 3,000, 620. This is what then remains. This is how you'd record it in your post-adjustment trial balance. Let us therefore look at adjustment number three. It reads, the February bank statement was received after the trial balance had been drawn up. The following item must be brought into account. Interest on favorable balance, 50. So, we have a favorable bank balance, 10,870. 
All right? So when we come here, we are now going to say our favorable bank balance, which is 10,870. We have received interest on a favorable, which is 50 rand. Therefore, our balance therefore becomes 10,920. Then that interest that we have received will be recorded as interest income. And once it is income, it therefore comes to the credit side of the trial balance. Hence, you see, I'll bring it to the credit side, then I have 50 rands. Very important that you understand that interest on a favorable balance is interest income. Interest on a favorable balance is interest income. Let us go and look at the next adjustment. It reads, Data B Baloyi has an account of 289 that must be written off as irrecoverable. When an account is being written off as irrecoverable, that means it is a bad debt. The account is being written off as irrecoverable. We're talking bad debts. Now, the moment you have bad debts, they affect your debtor's control. They decrease your debtor's control. That means we're going to come here and we had 4,980. Then we say minus 289 because that has been written off as bad debts. Our debtors therefore becomes 4,691. 4,691. Then our bad debts in the list of balances we had 836. 836. Then we'll come and we'll add 289 plus 289. So once we do that, we will therefore end up with, I want you to have your calculator, if you say 836, it's 836 plus the 289, plus the 289, all right, you end up with 1,000. 125, 1,125. This is what you end up now with on your bad debts in the nominal accounts section on the debit side because bad debts are an expense. So you debit the amount. We had 836, which was in the pre-adjustment trial balance. Then we adjust the 289. Therefore, we end up with 1,125. The fifth adjustment reads, commission income of 680 is still due to Jane. All right? So Jane is the owner of the business. So this is commission income that is due to us as a business. All right? So remember, it is commission income. In the nominal account section of the pre-adjustment trial balance, there was nothing recorded. Therefore, it means... When we come to the post-adjustment trial balance, we have accrued income. Accrued income, this is income that we are still to receive. So we debit it, and you have your 680 debited. And then commission income becomes 680 on the credit side, 680, because all income is credited in the trial balance. After you have done your adjustments, and therefore you have the post-adjustment trial balance. You can see your commission income is here as well as your interest income. Dear learners, let's go for an ad break and I'll see you shortly.